Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about the Rust programming language. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, do you think that Rust can become a solid language for microservices in the microservice backend development in the next few years? No, I don't think so. I'm very sorry to say no here because I wish I could say yes, because I think that if we could move in the direction of using Rust as a default for, well, not not all systems necessarily, but for, like to make, if we could make Rust the default, a, a choice that is as popular, if not more so, than using, say, PHP. Well, maybe PHP is a big, that's kind of strong to say that it's going to be, the, or Node or something like that. But if we could make Rust a very prominent choice for backend development, I think that the way that most companies do work would change. I'm not going to say that if we could make Rust the new Java, because that's just, like, I just don't see that happening. Uh, but if we could, let's play with the idea, then I think that that would be the best thing that could possibly happen for the entire for the entire IT uh, industry, like all of IT, it would be the best thing. Uh, primarily because Rust has uh, it would it would breathe a completely new. Uh, it would bring a a the perfect, in my opinion, at the very least, the perfect bridge between system levels development and the sort of low level understanding of computers to the web space. Like we would bri start bridging a lot of the knowledge gaps that we have, uh, that we kind of, we've kind of lost way, our way there, I would say. The web has gone into a very specific type of space where you are more, like you have your box of things that you need to know about, and that's kind of it. System develop Systems development is not as prominent to, okay, it's not as relevant for you to know about. And I think Rust has that perfect bridge, uh, at least for uh, right now, where it's, low level enough that you can build practically anything you would like. It's going to be super performant, it's going to be able to do practically whatever your heart desires, and it's still high level enough that you can build serious web applications with it. And on top of that, it actually helps you uh, create more performant code per default. It actually has a lot of the perks that you would wish I, at least I would like to. I, I wish that say C++ had been this language for us, it's, but it's not. Uh, and I don't think it has to be. I think that Rust is doing the job fairly well. The problem is, if you ask me, it, it's simply the ecosystem is too immature. I'm very sorry to say. That is not one of the biggest things for me right now, where like Rust simply does not have the sort of community that, uh, that you have in other languages where, I mean, if you need a package, if you need something in like say JavaScript or Node, like you can lit you, I, you can find every package, at least two or three versions of that package, most likely. That's going to save you a lot of time and not force you to write it from scratch. So you need to build up a code base uh, in the ecosystem of Rust in order to bridge that sort of thing. And then you have, you still have some time. Or we have some time to battle proof the th thing and kind of test it and put it through its paces. Because if you look at languages such as, say, C Sharp and Java, these are very trusted languages in the enterprise space and so forth. There are a few success cases, and I mean, Rust is, it's not like Rust is dead. There's no, like, I think it's just, it's just going to get better from here. Uh, but there is still some way to go until it becomes this accepted mainstream thing. And then you have the borrowing system, which is a big change for a lot of developers who are working in the web space these days, not having a garbage collector and all of this good stuff. So it, there's a lot of hoops to jump over, and I think we're going to get there for education and more success stories. And uh, I still really like to reference the Discord um, article when they started looking at Rust instead of, say, Golang for one of their services. And more of those sorts of success stories I think is the thing that's going to push people towards Rust as a programming language. But in the next few years, I think that it's just too it's too early. We, I mean, if sure, if it could happen, but I just think that there's there's too much noise right now, and Rust hasn't really gotten that uh, the, the it it's it's not at the point yet where you can just say you know what it is equal to everything else. I mean, the closest thing, I think, the underdog, because if you really, if you remember all the way back for a year, through a few years, before Golang, what was the big thing on the, before Golang? Well, it was Node.js. 
and Node.js has something that Rust does not, and that is a gigantic ecosystem where the, literally the only thing that has uh, has been the, like the main, like of course, of, of besides the, like the normal JavaScript hating that a lot of people have, the main argument against Node and so forth uh, until recently has been that it is not as developed as it needs to be. And honestly, Node and so JavaScript at this point is so close, I would say, to fulfilling all the possible requirements that you could have for modern enterprise applications that is kind of an argument that is not valid anymore. Golang does not have that. Golang cannot claim at this point to be equal to say Java or C Sharp in terms of feature and libraries and all that stuff because it's simply not there because that was the thing that came after Node. And now Rust comes into the mix or like potentially, I'm not saying because I mean Golang is still going very strong. It's the same sort of thing. You have to give it some time, like a language some time to build up the steam to actually compete in the more mainstream areas of web development because web is usually, although a lot of things are happening, people still like to bet on the safe, strong brands in the web space, except for companies who are really, really, really like bleeding edge, who try things out and like really experiment. But for the most part, it takes uh, time to actually you know, to transition to something new. So what I want you to take away from this is that I really wish that Rust became like this obvious strong choice for well, it doesn't have to be microservices, I would say anything in the web space, like all the backend work. Because if we could get to that point, I think that that would be the best thing for the entire community. It will help us build more performant applications by default. It will start uh, bridging the, the knowledge gap between system levels development and web development and kind of unifying its thing. It's almost like one of those marriages where two clans from true rival, rival barbarian clans marry their marry the daughter and the son or whatever from each side and you kind of just become one big happy family and I think Rust could be that language for us and since it is a language that is maintained by Mozilla there are a lot of political benefits like there's so much I think that we could gain from having Rust becoming this big success it's to me it's Rust has the same potential that JavaScript had uh, minus all of the 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 hate uh, because I haven't really seen anything but very positive things said about Rust. I think it's actually one of the most beloved languages today, even though it's not as big as I wish it was. Have a great day.